Hello, it's Nat here from Studio Hacks, and this channel was formerly known as Sonic Arts. We've done a little bit of a rebrand, and I've also had a little bit of a YouTube hiatus as I've been super busy in the studio uh, with recording projects and composing projects and uh, lots of exciting things happening. But I've had some renewed interest in some of my online video uh, and also my training uh, videos, so I've decided to start creating some more content for this channel uh, in the coming weeks and months. So today we have a tutorial on Audacity and how we use effects in Audacity. Now you can use the onboard effects that come for free with Audacity and you can also use your own VST plugins, uh, audio units on the Mac and uh, third-party plugins that you may have downloaded, such as the Waves Suite, which is fantastic. Um, I myself don't really use Audacity all that much, but a lot of my clients bring in Audacity sessions, and uh, I find that some of the features are not, um, you know, as user-friendly as some of the other digital audio workstations, such as Logic and Pro Tools and things like that. And one of those features is how you use the plugins. And so first of all, you have to have some audio to use a plugin. I've just got this uh, little hip hop um, free copyright audio from the YouTube audio library that I'm going to be demonstrating on. I normally wouldn't use effects on an entire mix unless I was mastering. So under this effects menu here, there's one little mistake that you can actually get caught out with. See, I was playing. I was playing this song and then I paused it. And then I noticed all of the audacity effects were grayed out. That's because you actually have to hit stop. And then you'll notice they're no longer grayed out. So audacity gives you a bunch of effects. These are quite brutal, not all that great. Some of them are okay. The reverb's all right. Um, so what we'll do is when we hit preview, we'll hear this effect uh, on that part of the waveform that I've selected. So if I wanted to apply this effect to the entire mix, I would actually have to get out of there, select the whole stem there, go to reverb, and then when I hit OK, that is actually going to destructively burn the reverb into the waveform. Now you can undo, which is good, and there's a redo under the effect here. It will say repeat what you just did or command R. So you can use an effect on one little bit here and then repeat that same effect somewhere else with exactly the same settings, which is handy. So I'll just undo both of those things. Now this is a little bit counterintuitive if you're used to another digital audio workstation. I've just got Ableton Live here, but it could be Logic or Pro Tools, because the way you use plugins on these um, digital audio workstations, the standard way is, let's say I wanted, I mean, I don't usually put a reverb directly on a track, but if I just, you can sometimes for certain effects. Now, what's happening is that waveform there remains intact, unaltered, and then all it's doing is running the output of the track through this uh, reverb plugin and then it's coming out the plugin and going to the master track so at any time you can turn the plugin off or you can alter um, you know anything on that plugin as much as you like and you can change it over time it will never actually burn directly into the waveform so what I was doing I was getting kind of stuck um, on audacity so let's just find where we've got audacity here. Um, I was getting stuck because I was looking, I put an effect on there. Um, and then, so let's go for a, a third party effect, like um, a, um, let's just find, oh, I'll just, I'll stick with reverb. You can, you can do anything. Or even if I had like a, a uh, master bus compressor, like an L2. Um, so this is just a compressor that is usually used in mastering. Um, so what I can do now, this little um, kind of box does not normally appear at the bottom of the Waves uh, graphic user interface. This has been put here by Audacity because you need to listen to it and then change the settings. And then when the settings are right, you hit apply and it's going to burn that effect 
into the waveform. So for a traditional audio engineer who's used to a high-end digital audio workstation, this could be pretty frustrating because we may have three, four, five, any number of effects on a track that we'd like to open and close. And what I did was I said, okay, apply. And then I was going to look where that plugin was. I said, where is it? I want to open it up and and change uh, the change it again. I couldn't find it anywhere because you're only you can only bring it up once, and then once you've used it, it gets burnt in. So um, let's have a quick listen. We'll get, apply a little bit of uh, compression to this whole mix. And then we'll apply that and this waveform should probably look a lot thicker with the L2 which gives it, a, it's an ultra maximizer, which is a compression limiter. So it did a little bit there. Let's do it again just to get the effect super good. There we go. Um, so we can see now that's burnt in. Now there's no way to recall that uh, plugin. You have to actually just go undo and undo. So you're kind of destructively editing it. So a little bit limited in the way that it works, um, but you can use all, I mean, it is a free program um, and it does work quite well. So that's, it's it's great that they've integrated the, the use of third-party plugins um, into Audacity. Uh, for example, if you had a backing track, if you were just doing simple low budget demos from home, or you were just wanting to capture yourself singing over a backing trap or rapping, it's fantastic because you can get a, a free uh, beat or something like that, uh, free to use. There's tons of them on YouTube. Um, lots of beat makers uh, give away one beat out of every three or four that they make just to promote themselves. Um, and then you can you know, create a new track um, and then rap or sing through your microphone into there. You can put some, um, you can go into the effects here. You can put a nice uh, equalizer on your on your vocals. Um, so they've got some uh, presets here. So this is like a parametric EQ. So you could boost the, uh, the air and the presence and the crispiness of your voice. And uh, you could do essentially a high pass filter um, to get rid of any microphone rumble and then you could go okay and then that would burn into the waveform so you just have to remember what you've done you, you put some EQ you may be able to put some compression and some reverb and you can pretty much get a similar effect from any other major digital audio workstation um, as long but you know you can't actually go back and then tweak those settings once they're they're in there you can only undo and redo so that's how you use the onboard effects and the third party effects uh, within audacity i hope you've enjoyed this video nice to be back on youtube and uh, i'm going to be doing plenty more of these uh, style videos uh, if you have any requests for me to do a video on your your digital audio workstation i'm uh, very very good with ableton live Pro Tools and Logic. I'm pretty good with Studio One, Reaper, uh, what else? Um, GarageBand and Mixcraft. So hit me up and make a request and uh, I'll do a video for you. So uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.